Hi, once again, everybody. I'm Butch Stearns. He's Eric Lundquist. Welcome back to this latest edition of CIO Insight here on the Pulse Network at thepulsenetwork.com. Uh, I found uh, your guy, Guy, very <laughs> fascinating, very well educated, very informative. I had several takeaways. I got friends so. like that. I got friends <laughs> that aren't like that too. I but. wasn't insinuating <laughs> that you don't. Uh, you hang out with Ashley for crying well, out loud. That's right. Yeah, so, no. uh, okay, uh, social text. Talk to me, Eric, about our guest, Gene Lee, the CEO and founder, is going to Skype in in just a moment. Talk to me about the company. Talk to me about what they do uh, and what you want people to know about them. Well, I, you know, it's a sort of a continuation of what we've been talking about, Butch. But So we, all the companies, businesses, they hear about social network, and they hear about it's important. And you were asking questions about, well, what's a like worth, you know, and yeah. what's a Google Plus worth? Well, you need a company that tries to give not only advice, but tells you how to integrate social networks into your company, how to be able to use those networks, how to really be able to make it part of your business rather than this sort of add-on thing. And that's really, well, Gene, Gene can correct me if I'm wrong, but that's really what this company's about, and they've really been in the forefront of this developing this integration of both external and internal communications. Well, let's bring in Gene Lee now, the president and CEO of Social Text. Gene, welcome to CIO Insight and welcome to the Pulse Network. Hi, thank you, and it's good to see you again, Eric. Gene, good to see you. How did I do at uh, describing your company? Uh, I think you did pretty well. I think, uh, you know, what I would add to what you've said is, uh, you know, a lot of people are now understanding the power of uh, and value of sharing through things like Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and so on. Uh, sharing content about what's going on in their lives uh, and connecting, reconnecting, or um, uh, finding connections through their, uh, you know, uh, social networks. <clears throat> what we do at Social Text is to create software that runs securely inside of companies' networks to help companies' employees make the most use of uh, other uh, the connections that they have, uh, the connections that they ought to have, uh, as well as the content and knowledge that's. Um, previously been trapped inside of all of those people's heads. You so know, social thing, text was... You know, sorry. I just got to say to you, you know, one thing, as I started to travel around, more and more companies become very mobile. Their workforces are dispersed all over the place. But a lot of times the, the systems involved haven't really caught up with that, all these dispersed workers. I mean, is this something that you address also within the company? Well, uh, yes, sure. So, uh, you know, enterprise social software is most useful when everybody's using it and um, people are increasingly using stuff um, to communicate, to collaborate, to interact with systems uh, from multiple devices. So we support uh, a wide range of smartphones. Uh, we even have some customers that purchase iPads for all of their employees specifically to use social text. Um, so yeah, we are seeing a lot of that. I think it's about more about distributed and disparate workforces, um, whether it's people that are quote-unquote telecommuting, people working from home, people working on the road, um, or even, you know, s teams that are uh, working out of uh, multiple different offices and finding ways to create uh, those connections, um, that uh, ability to work together, um, regardless of their location and time zone. You know, when the, uh, now you've been at uh, Adobe and Cisco, as I remember, Gene, I mean, you've made a lot, you made some stops in the Valley. When, if you're going to offer some advice to CIOs, thinking about using products such as yours, yours, but just thinking of this dispersed workforce and how to not just uh, develop systems around it, but also make it useful and, and be able to you know, make your ROI case with your senior managers. What would be some of the steps you'd advise for a CIO to take when they're looking at products and services uh, such as yours? Well, I think that's a great question, and it's actually a question that my sales team is trained to ask. Uh, very early in uh, a conversation with a potential customer. Uh, we uh, would mu strongly prefer to work with customers who themselves have a business, a senior business leader, um, first of all, partnered with IT. So instead of trying to do an end run around IT to actually partner with it, because somebody's got to keep the lights on, keep it running, make sure it's secure, integrated with uh, the corporate directory um, and corporate uh, security. Um, a senior business leader who can articulate what business problem they're trying to solve through the deployment of social software. Because if you don't really know what problem you're trying to solve, you're quite likely to end up deploying um, a modern version of shelfware. Um, 
And so there are um, some organizations out there that um, have names like the uh, Adoption Council and things like that, uh, which are comprised of champions um, who are deploying corporate social software um, and having and are struggling getting their users to adopt it and use it. Uh, they meet monthly. I call it, uh, you know, a group therapy for people who bought too much stuff. <laughs> um, and I'm uh, quite proud of the fact that Social Text has no customers in any of these organizations. And I think that's primarily because we uh, try to work as early in the process as possible to identify not only what business problem are you trying to solve, um, but what projects, which teams, which uh, which work processes are most important um, and could be improved by helping people find who else should be on this team, by helping people uh, collaborate more in the flow of work as opposed to above the flow of work. Yeah, you know, um, one, uh, one organization that I thought was the original mobile dispersed organization was pro sports teams. And, you know, Butch, I was going to ask you, say, how do those organizations, you've traveled with them, how, how do they stay in communication with the home office in that. Well, it's very interesting. We at IMS last week, we had a panel that I hosted with um, the social media marketing directors, for lack of a better title, of the Boston Red Sox and the Boston Celtics. <laughs> and they had two very different views of how they do it. And they also, like every industry, have different things they have to deal with. For example, the relationship with MLB.com and NBA.com is as helpful as it is hurtful because it's restrictive. Um, using those sports teams as an example, I think the team is the key thing. For example, Gene, I have a question for you. I'm on your blog and I'm reading about uh, how you write well-written use cases presented by prospective customers is a fantastic sign that a new technology space is becoming less immature. And you go on to talk about part of the challenge or, or part of the way to do it is to get your team together. And you also just said in answering Eric's question that this is all great, but if you don't have the IT guy involved, you're doing an end around. There's a sports analogy again for you, Eric. <laughs> but so it really has to work together. You really have to, and, and what really struck home with me, but I'm going to take away from what you just said before is what business problem are you trying to solve? Let's start there, because otherwise this technology and using it together doesn't make any sense if you're not all going towards the same goal. Yep, and I think um, so. So the uh, the thing that I'm uh, you know excited about and proud of is the, you know the ways in which our customers have been successful in in kind of art identifying, articulating, and then deploying these use cases, um, ranging from getting sales and marketing to work better together around product launches, or um, helping uh, educators and administrators in a large distributed public school network in Australia uh, to uh, share best practices and knowledge to. Uh, corporate IT departments in uh, one of the oldest insurance companies in Massachusetts uh, to de-silo their knowledge around specific technology issues. Um, and in many cases, what this drives towards is a, an aggregated use case that we describe as the social intranet. If you look at corporate intranets today, um, I spoke with an industry analyst who's an expert in the area of, of corporate intranets. He, said, he asked me a question. He said, well, what would you think is the most commonly visited page beyond the start page or the search bar in your average corporate intranet? Mm -hmm. Eric, what would you guess that is? <laughs> I'd, I'd guess the lunch menu, Gene. I'm not exactly. <laughs> it's, you're the first person. I've done this you know, dozens of times. You're the first person who's gotten that right on the first Get page. out of town. <laughs> Spoken like a man who knows. And what's it's the number one search there? Is it Panera? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, the, the corporate, the cafeteria lunch menu is hardly, you know, a business problem that's, that's being solved. Um, and, you know, I think what the issues about the corporate intranet is not just that it's older technology, it's that the content uh, model is still uh, predicated on the old kind of corporate newsletter. So I think a lot of people think of their intranet as a publishing model. Um, whereas what employees are trying to do is to get work done. They don't know who they should be working with. Is there somebody else who can help them answer a question? Um, you know, uh, is there some content out there that I can reuse? Things like that. Um, and I, I've spoken to many heads of IT, heads of the collaboration team in IT, heads of the intranet team in IT, who, t you know, use language ranging from our intranet's a little static to more bold language like our intranet really sucks. You know, and, so I, one, um, one thing I always like to know, Gene, is uh, I always ask is, uh, what's new? What's coming up? Maybe we could just, you know, close up the interview. We could talk a lot, lot more. But... Give us a little uh, insight into sort of some of the new things that will be coming from your company. Well, what's been uh, a big initiative for us over the last year has been um, to uh, make what we call the social layer a reality. Um, there are some vendors out there, traditional enterprise application vendors, 
who, you know, rightly, you know, or understandably think that, well, social is just a feature and I can just kind of add it to my application stack and let people kind of have my app tweak things and then have my users um, share knowledge, um, you know, within that activity stream. But if you ever read the back of your shampoo bottle and read the instructions, it says lather, rinse, repeat. So what if we lather, rinse, repeat the concept of social being a feature? Well, what we'll end up with, and uh, I think your CIOs would, could relate to this, is we'll have silos of social users built on top of the captive silos of users around each of those applications. And breaking down silos is fundamentally the whole point of social software. So that trend makes no sense. It, you know, it goes to um, an illogical conclusion. And so we argue that social needs to be a layer across the enterprise. It belongs um, as a layer um, directly in the enterprise architecture. Uh, and we have an offering that we uh, produced called Social Text Connect that enables uh, an enterprise um, IT organizations to connect their existing systems of record into the social stream. Wow. So uh, it really does integrate all the pieces in which there you go, you can do your uh, business reading in the shower by reading the back of the shower. Well, the one thing sometimes. Gene didn't say was it says lather, rinse, repeat, lather, rinse, repeat, and then here replacement surgery if you keep That's doing right. it over <laughs> and over again. Yeah, or, great. Or, or, or Rogaine. Uh, well, <laughs> Gene, great, great stuff. Really informative, really educational, fun to listen to. Thank you, my friend. Okay, thank you guys. Okay, yeah. Gene Lee, the CEO and uh, uh, president uh, of Social Text. Quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about Windows 8 Server. Eric Lundquist, Butch Stern, CIO Insight, rolls on after this. The Pulse Network, it's social TV.